I don't think, quite honestly, it penetrated. I mean, how could I? I was, I was worried about I've got son. this condition, I've got this cancer. Do you yes, actually talk uh, initially with It friends? turned our world upside down. Nothing was ever, ever going to be the same again. The single most life-changing moment is coming to terms with your own mortality. Each year, more than 1.6 million people are diagnosed as having lung cancer worldwide. It's one of the most common kinds of cancer, accounting for almost 13% of all diagnosis. You are not alone. If you or someone you care for has just been diagnosed with lung cancer, then it's almost certain that you'll be feeling shocked and frightened. Fear of the unknown and uncertainty about the future can be stressful to you and to those closest to you. This DVD has been produced with the help of other patients, carers and healthcare professionals to help you and your family prepare for and best manage the journey ahead. We show you what to expect during your treatment, how other patients have each reacted and dealt with their own experiences and emotions as well as sharing some of the many positive actions that they have taken to ensure they get the best from their treatment and life going forward. Each person's experience is unique, and while you may prefer to watch the whole DVD in one go, you may also prefer to pick sections which are most relevant to you at any one moment in time. For this reason, the content is split into easy-to-use chapters for you to select from. Lung cancer is a term used to describe an abnormal growth of cells inside your lungs. Cancerous cells reproduce at a much quicker rate than normal and cluster together to produce a growth or fluid. This is commonly called a tumour. If the cells first start growing in the lung, it's called a primary tumour. If these cells break off and travel to other areas of the body, the new growth they develop is called a secondary tumour or metastasis. Three people, every second, are diagnosed with lung cancer and the news can be devastating. The 21st of June 2005 was the day our life changed completely. Well initially uh, I always seemed to have a cold and uh, during the process of my work, I started to feel as though I was slowing down. I went to visit my doctor. I had a persistent tickly cough, you know, and uh, the wife was going on, oh, you must get it sorted, you know, and one thing and another. And, and it hadn't even dawned. I mean, I had no reason to think there was anything seriously wrong with me. I mean, I'd had a bronchoscopy on the Wednesday and, and a scan on the Friday. And I was in church on Sunday and there was somebody, I knew her mother was ill, and I said, how is your mum? And she said, oh, you know, she's got lung cancer. And it just suddenly went through my mind, I wonder, is that what I have? But to tell you the truth, it wasn't the words that happened. Um, I've always been a fairly laid-back kind of guy, and I don't show emotion very easily. But... He, he searched around in his office for a booklet um, to help me understand things. And the booklet was in block letters on the front, lung cancer. Uh, and we come out, as we came outside, and we stood in the street. I looked at her and I just burst into tears, you know. And I thought, what am I going to do now? You're never ready to be told you have lung cancer. Suddenly your plans have to change and you need to start looking at life differently. But it is important to understand that it's normal to feel scared and unprepared. You should focus on your treatment and make plans for coping with your change of pace. Well, the first thing that happens when you know you have cancer um, you have your family. How, how am I going to explain this? I went through all the uh, uh, the, the classic 
emotions of denial and blame and, uh, and everything else. If you ask me how Mick coped, he went into a complete shutdown mode for a fortnight, didn't talk to anybody, wouldn't talk to me, and then came out fighting. Um, and months and months later, when we were talking about what he was doing, he was literally getting his head around it and left me to do all the peripheral things around him. And he just said, don't cry, you need to be strong for me. I put myself into work, you know, I worked all the hours God sent. If he asked me to go here, there and everywhere I used to go, I used to volunteer for all the overtime, you know, just to wrap myself up. I masked it really, you know. Uh, and plus the fact I didn't have to face Susan, you know, and discuss it with her, you know. Uh, because, you know, every time she looked at me, I, I mean, some, it seems silly, but she, she sort of like, bursting into tears, you know. I really had no idea how it, how it might affect the, the rest of the family. I'd barely accepted it myself. I hate to say it, but there were times where am I going to wake up in the morning? I actually thought that. It turned our world upside down, but I had to look forward and we had to think positive and say, right, let's get this surgery out of the way and see how we go from there. This is, this is something that nobody else is experiencing. This is, this, this is my, this is my cancer.